Hi everyone, it's Lynn Dion here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to be making a detachable bookmark card. And this card was inspired by the current Art Impressions Challenge, which was to use your Bible journaling border stamps to create a card or a project. So let's go ahead and get started. So for paper, we're using the Hero Hues Meadow cardstock. This is a 100 pound weight. And then we're going to cut this paper to eight and a half by nine and a half. So I've placed this in my We Are Memory Keepers trim and scoreboard. And again, I'm going to cut this at eight and a half by nine and a half. So I want to make some score lines. To turn this into a scoreboard, you just need to flip over this little tab. Now I'm going to push the paper up into that upper right hand corner. And I'm going to score this at three and a half inches and at seven inches. The next thing I want to do is take this bookmark die. And this set has all these cute little pieces in here as well. And again, this is from Art Impressions. Next, we want to create the detachable bookmark. So we've got our score lines here at three inches and seven inches. So I'm going to go to this seven inch score line. And I'm going to place the die right along that score line, just a little bit to the right of it here, just a slightly over that groove. So we've got the scores that we made face up. So that would be the groove side is face up. So I'm going to position this uh, equal distance top and bottom and over to the right, just a little bit of that score line. Make sure it's nice and straight. So I've taped this down with some purple tape. And we're going to go ahead and run that through the Spellbinder Platinum machine. So this is a larger machine just to make sure that it will fit inside the machine. So I'm going to place it on the platform and on one of the cutting mats. And then I'm going to take that second cutting mat. And we're going to be cutting from that score line to the right hand side there. So from that line to the right. So you want to make sure that it's not going to cut that line there on the left side. You want to move it and position it to the right of the die, just a little bit to the right of the die. And then we're going to run that through the die cutting machine. And that's only going to cut again from the score line to the right hand side. So let me take the uh, die off here so you can get a closer look at that. So you can see where I've, I have my cuts right up to that score. So now I just need to get rid of that excess. So I'm placing it in my Fiskars paper trimmer and I'm going to cut right up to that bookmark. And where that little pointer is on the side is where your blade is. But in this case you may need to lift the uh, blade up every once in a while just to make sure where you're cutting. So I'm going to do the same thing at the top, again, lining, lining it up with the score line and coming down to that bookmark and just kind of checking that to make sure that I'm not going to go too far. So once I have that done, there's a little bit of trimming I need to do here. If it didn't detach by itself, just grab your scissors and just make a little cut there. Just snip right to that, that score line there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side as well. So now you can see we have this cute little bookmark attached to our card. So now what I want to do is create the detachable part. So I'm going to create a perforated line here. So I'm using a cutting mat and I'm placing this on, I'm lining it up with the lines on the cutting mat. I'm lining up the, the end of the bookmark or that score line on the bookmark with the cutting mat lines. I'm taping this down really well with some purple tape and then I'm using my T ruler to do the perforating. So I want to make sure that again is lined up right along that score line. And this is the perforating tool. It's called the mini rotary perforator and it's by Tim Holtz and it does collapse. So if you like to travel with your supplies like I do, this is nice because you can just close it up. It's got a little place for your finger so because you will need to apply some pressure here. And that's why I'm using the cutting mat rather than my glass mat, which you could use. But I find that you need to apply some pressure here to the cutting mat and you want it to have a little give so that you're pressing down into the paper. 
I'm also taping down my T-ruler again just to make sure that it doesn't move on me here. Now you want to line up that perforating tool right along the edge of your ruler and you're kind of pushing in towards the ruler. And I will say, suggest here that you practice this a couple times on some scrap paper before you go to your cardstock. It just takes a little bit of time to get used to this. So there you can see the perforation. And I did a little piece of scrap paper just to show you that as well, because I don't want to tear this one off the cardstock, obviously. So I just want to show you how that creates that little perforation and it'll tear and separate from the card when the recipient is ready to remove the bookmark. So I'm just going to go ahead and press out these folds. I don't want to be too aggressive on the bookmark because I don't want it to separate. So I'm going to be using the fourth largest rectangle from this set and the sixth largest rectangle. And these are my rectangle A2 double stitch dies. For paper, I'm using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. And I've cut a panel here. And what I want to do is get to approximately seven and a half inches. So we're creating a slim line card, but we're going to use our regular rectangular dies to do this. So I'm lining this up right along the two straight edges, the left and the bottom. Make sure you do have straight edges when you start here. It makes it a lot easier. And then this one I want to get to about four and a half inches. So my goal is to get the top one to about seven and a half inches and this lower one to about four and a half inches. So the first thing I want to do is this larger one. I'm going to run it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine. And I'm just again laying that top plate just before that frame. So I want to cut from that frame to the right. So it's only going to cut where I have the plate. So you can see that there. So now again, I want to get to that seven and a half inch mark. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that here. I'm just laying it on my glass medium mat just to figure out where that is. I'm going to mark it with a pencil here. And then again, I'm going to take my T ruler and draw a line there. This will make it easier for you to see where I'm trying to make my cuts here. So now I can go ahead and line up the die to cut the other half of this. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for that pencil line and you can see that the cut line on this die is in the center of that frame. So I'm just trying to get it, again, this is approximate. It doesn't have to be perfect here. So I'm lining up the die with that seven and a half inch mark and I'm taping it down. And then I'm, while I have my pencil and my T ruler out, I'm just gonna mark the four and a half inch line on this one as well. So let's go back to that larger one. I'm placing it in the die cutting machine again. I'm only gonna cut the right hand side of the frame this time, not the left hand side. I'm lining up that top plate with the edge of that frame and I'm running it through again. Now we're cutting the right hand side. So now we have a full longer panel. So you can do this with any of your dies. If you want to extend out the length of the die, you just do a partial die cutting. Now here you can see that because I don't need to cut as much of this, I'm going to place the plate a little bit further to the right this time. Then I'm going to remove that turn it around, line it up on my straight edge and on that four and a half inch pencil mark. I'm going to tape that down and I'm going to run that through again. Again, just putting the plate on the areas that I want to cut, which is just the right hand side of the die. So I'm lining up that plate and I'm going to run that through one more time. So that's going to give me the two panels that I need for my card. So now I'm going to do a little bit of stamping here and I've got this beautiful border. You get two stamps in this set and this is the Poppy Border Set from Art Impressions and this is just beautiful. So what I want to do here is I'm going to do the stamping down towards the bottom of this panel. And I want to stamp this three times so I'm going to use the two borders here to start off and I'm just lining them up 
right along the bottom. It's going to look like they're growing up towards the top of the card here. For ink, I'm using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp these. So I'm just using a little paper towel there just to make it easier to rub this, just to get a nice clear stamping here. Now once I've got those stamped, I want to stamp this one more time. So I'm going to clean off my stamps really well here. And I'm going to position one of those on this right hand side of the panel. I did notice it was going to overlap just a little bit there. So I'm just grabbing a post-it note and just masking off that little area at the bottom where it was going to overlap. And I'm just going to position this one in place. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp this as well. So you can see that there. So now I, while I have the stamps out, I'm going to go ahead and do the bookmark as well for the inside of the card. So I'm just going to tape this in place with a little bit of the Tombow tape. And this will easily remove when we're done. So I'm just going to temporarily hold this down. I'm just selecting which border stamp that I want here. And I'm just going to line that up. And then I'll go ahead and stamp this panel as well. So now I can remove that from the MISTI. I'm going to go ahead really quickly and heat set these with my heat tool. Now I'm using bright yellow, orange, and wine red to do the coloring on the flowers. And these are the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. And these are a water-based marker. And I'm using the three colors. I'm just going to apply them right away, just all three colors. And then I'm going to come in a little later with a little more shadowing. So I'm using my blender pen to blend these colors in together trying to keep the edges of the petals the lightest. And if it gets too dark, you can see that I'm just scribbling off that extra color on some scrap paper there. And now I'm adding a little bit of shadow there along some of those petals and in the center. I'll show you one more flower. I won't show you all the flowers because I did all of them the same exact way. On this one, I'm going to add a little bit of shadowing down at the bottom of that petal and then in towards the center. And again, just pulling those colors out and cleaning off the pen if it gets too dark. Now again, these are water-based markers, so you could use a water brush to do your blending here if you feel more comfortable with that. Now with yellow, mid-green, and olive green, I'm going to color in all the leaves. And I'm starting off with the yellow, and then adding the mid-green, and then a little bit of the darker green here and just blending out towards the edges of the, of the leaves. And coming back in with a little bit more of a shadow here. And I do like to add yellow to the leaves. I just think it adds a little bit of a highlight to the leaves. But you could certainly skip the yellow if you wanted to. You do want to make sure your blender pen is clean when you change colors. And to clean it, you just scribble it onto your scrap paper until it goes clear. Now I'm going to grab the yellow and just do those little berries on these vines as well. So I finished coloring that in. You can take a closer look at that here. And I also colored in the bookmark the exact same way. So now I want to attach these to some black cardstock. I've got some 100 pound black cardstock here. And since all of our measurements will be a slightly different because of the way we die cut these panels, they may be a little more or less than the seven and a half inches here. So I'm just going to place it right onto the black cardstock. Again, making sure I have two straight edges here. And I'm leaving a little bit of a border. And then I'm just going to place that in my Tim Holtz paper trimmer and trim away the excess. Again, leaving a little border all the way around each of these panels. Now I want to stamp a sentiment on this one. So I'm going to grab this beautiful stamp set here. And I'm going to grab this sentiment. The sentiment says, wishing you every blooming thing. 
And then later on, we'll be using the Happy Birthday from this set as well. And this is the exclusive hydrangea set that was done in conjunction with scrapbook.com. So I'm going to position this up towards the top of this panel, just centering it on each side. And then going back to my VersaFine Onyx Black ink, I'm going to go ahead and stamp this. So now, using this next set here, which has some beautiful images on it, I'm going to use, for the inside of the card, I'm going to use this sentiment that says, On Your Special Day. And this is from the exclusive Daisy set that was also done in conjunction with scrapbook.com. So now I'm going to take that sentiment and stamp it on my bookmark. I have placed this in my larger Misty. This is the 12 by 12, but you could certainly just place this stamp on a small acrylic block and go ahead and stamp it if you don't have this larger Misty. So I've inked that up with my VersaFine ink and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. And again, I'm going back to that hydrangea set and I'm going to grab the happy birthday. So I've cut a panel eight and a quarter by three and a quarter. And this is going to be for the inside of the card. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp my happy birthday right in the center of this panel. Now I can go ahead and attach that to the inside of the card and I'm using my Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive to attach this. And that'll just give me a little time to move this around and make sure that it's perfectly centered here. And what I like to do when I'm pressing out these large panels is use my large We Are Memory Keepers bone folder just to press everything down. And then I can go ahead and attach this panel to my bookmark And just centering that just below that notch on the bookmark there. And again, pressing that out with my bone folder. So flipping the card over, I can do the front panel. And I'm going to center this on my card. So now you can see this is coming together. Now I grab some ribbon. I just have this leftover ribbon that I had in my stash. It's just a, a, about a maybe a half inch, like a satin type ribbon. And I'm going to slide that through from the back to the front. And then I'm going to slide these little ends through that loop and pull up. And just be careful when you do this. You don't want to tear the paper. Just gently pull on that and then snip away the excess. And I do want that to stick up over the top of the card just a little bit so that they know there's something extra special inside. So I'm just going to cut a piece of that ribbon to wrap around the front of my card and tie a bow. And this will just keep everything closed nicely here. I'm snipping away the ends on that. And that will just slide on and off the card. So now with my neat and tangled sequin mix, this is the festive fall mix. I'm just going to add a few of those kind of orangey colored uh, sequins here and I'm using my Silhouette Pick Me Up tool. This just has a sticky end on it that will allow me to easily pick these up and glue these in place. So I went ahead and glued all of those down. And that just adds a little something special to the front of the card. So here's a closer look at the front. I just love these flowers. They're so beautiful. And this we can just slide right off and they get to see that beautiful bookmark inside. And then the happy birthday. Now what you can do here is to let somebody know that they can tear this off. You can either write their tear here or use your stamps to stamp that out. And I may even use my uh, label maker just to put a little label in there. And you may even have a stamp that says, you know, pull here or tear here. You could use that as well. 
So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. As always, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.